my wife met someone on a cruise and, man, do I hate to be him. Hi everyone, welcome back to another Reddit cheating story. Before we start, please hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you won't miss another cheating story goes live. To the guy my wife met on a cruise, this is what I have to say. I don't know where else to put this. You met my wife on a cruise, and instantly fell in love. I saw your texts. Within months you were saying you wanted her to be your third wife. She was writing all the same things to you that she wrote to me. How she has never done certain sexual things before, she had. She would tell me the same things when we first started dating. When I eventually talked to her first ex-husband he just laughed, and told me all kinds of things she had done which filled in a lot of half-truths that she had told me. I don't know what she told you on the cruise, but she left her wedding ring behind because she didn't want to lose it. Two years later you're selling all your stuff on Facebook and you're getting ready to marry her and move halfway across the country to CA and leave your kids behind. She has a difficult time telling the truth about a lot of things so here's what you should know. 1. She hasn't finalized the paperwork on her current marriage, and technically won't be able to have it done before your planned wedding date. 2. She cheated on her first husband, and lied about it to me. I've heard your first two wives cheated on you, so you're walking into a minefield here. She has also cheated on me a number of times. She's also helped her friend cheat on her husband, and also had sex with her friend's husband. 3. The cheating isn't what ruined our relationship. It was her lying. Also her drinking. 4. She was fired from her job last year, and she has a really convoluted story about how it happened. The reality is she was showing up to her hospital shift drunk. A lot. She's still drinking. She's still unemployed. She spent a week in jail because of multiple DUI charges. 5. During our marriage, her two girls would ask her frequently if she was drunk. She'd snap at them, and it would break my heart every time. I handled her drinking wrong too. She hid wine bottles in the back of the closet, and when I asked her why she did that she'd get angry with me. 6. She once drove home so drunk that she smashed the front end of the car in, and she barely made it through the front door before passing out. I almost called the police to anonymously ask if there had been a hit and run. But we were broke and I was afraid that the legal bills would ruin us. I could barely talk to her for two days because she was lying to me left and right. And when I finally went to talk to her about it, all I said was I'm happy you made it home safe. Because I thought she couldn't argue about that, and wouldn't give her an opportunity to lie. That phrase turned into another two-hour argument marathon, common with her, about what an asshole I was for making her feel like shit for two days. 7. I heard the story of the weekend you proposed to her with her friends at the cabin, you wouldn't believe how through the grapevine this story came to me. It was supposed to be magical. The next morning she had disappeared only to be found in the bathroom passed out in her vomit after finishing one last bottle of wine for the evening. You should get used to that behavior. 8. Just two weeks ago she told me how I was her soulmate and was the love of her life. My response was if you can do this to the love of your life, I'd hate to be the new guy. You might be thinking I'm telling you all this because I want her back. Before all this went down I would have beat my head, body, and soul against a brick wall then poured the gelatinous leftovers back into the marriage to make it work. But you made me see it was never going to work. I finally saw all her lies, and also saw my codependence which gave me something to work on. What I would really like is to spare my kids the heartache of her latching on to someone else while refusing to work through her problems. In the last 35 years, she has never been not dating someone. She's broke, she went through six figures of cash in a little over two years all while still being employed. And she's on the verge of moving out of town to a friend's place and leaving the kids with me 100%. If you postpone your marriage now, and wait for her divorce to be complete before moving out, this is what I win. I get my kids full time. I've considered going to court over this, but it hurts me to think of the impression this would leave on my kids. What you get is a potential spouse who might get reflective enough to wonder how she lost her job, her marriage, her house and kids and now lives unemployed on her good friend's graces. Step in now and she repeats her cycle again. If you know someone who is getting ready to marry someone they met on a cruise and then move halfway across the country, talk to them. Have them look up love bombing. It's what she did to me when her first marriage was ending. I found out about three months before our wedding that she was trying to get her first divorce finalized in a panic. Here is the second story. Ex-girlfriend tried to make me raise a child who wasn't mine. I don't really have a lot of people in my life right now, but I hope that you all can enjoy this small victory with me. My ex and I were together for four years. 
I was actually out shopping for an engagement ring the day I found out she'd been cheating on me. Turns out she'd been with the guy for six months and he had just found out about me around the time I found out about him. He gave her an ultimatum and she chose him. I was devastated, but there is no way I can be with a cheater so I spent the next month taking extra shifts and increasing my gym time to try and get my mind off of her. Blocked her and her family as they are awful people anyway. Things were quiet until I got a text from an unknown number. It's my ex saying she is pregnant and that I'm the father. I don't believe her, but better safe than sorry for my potential child's sake I offer to get a paternity test done. She refuses stating that he and I were the only men she'd been with for years and he had already tested negative so it had to be mine. I keep insisting that we get the test done and after a lot of back and forth and she says she will schedule one and that we should meet up beforehand and then head to the clinic to get the test done. I agree because she finally accepted getting the test done. So we met up at a coffee shop near the clinic. I am expecting a talk about what the next steps are if I end up being the father. Instead she tries to turn the conversation into a talk about the good old days when we were together and a bunch of nostalgic stories. I keep trying to steer the conversation back to the child and the test, but she keeps going back to the relationship and talks about how she misses what we had. I'm freaking out about the potential child I have to take care of so I don't realize what she is doing at the time trying to get me to take her back. It comes time for us to go to the clinic and she starts asking me if I have plans for the day and if I want to go get a bite and hang out at her place for a bit. I respond that my only plans for the day are to get her to the clinic so we can get our paternity test done and figure out what to do after that. I just want to get this shit over with. Not take a walk down memory lane you know? Well then she excuses herself to go to the bathroom and comes back a few minutes later saying that the clinic called and had to reschedule. I asked her if she was lying and she said no that they had called while she was in the bathroom. So I started to dial the clinic and she freaked out and admitted she had never actually made the appointment. It is at this moment that all doubt about the paternity of the child vanished. I pressed her for the truth and she finally broke down and told me. New boyfriend was confirmed to be the father from a paternity test. Once he found out he ghosted her and she has been unable to locate him. Freaking out she told her mother who told her the best course of action would be to talk to me about being the baby's father as I'm an upstanding man who will do what is right and raise this child. Said by the woman who once told me she'd rather die than invite me into their family. So anyway after getting the truth, or at least some of it, out of her I got up and left without another word. Got home and have been on the receiving end of hundreds of messages from my ex, her family, and her friends all making new accounts to message me to beg me to take her back. Calling me an asshole for abandoning her, and one guy who just keeps sending me dick pics which I find absolutely hilarious. Honestly walking away from her and finally realizing I'm better off without her has been such a freeing feeling and I hope I can hold on to that feeling for a while because I needed this. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell for any future cheating stories.